Okay, we're back on this thing. Sorry it been going so long. It's summertime and there's lots to do around here, so I can't find the time to sit down here and do the things I like to do. I've got to go out and do the things that I still enjoy doing, but not as much as this. Anyway, today we're going to paint the head. So, uh, he's looking pretty good. So I'm going to take him apart here. feathers off. On the shield, I think you remember, I used the excess paint we had left over from painting the body to go ahead and put an initial coat on the shield. Okay. So, painting a head. Skin tones. A lot of people ask me about this, so I'll go over it one more time. You have to take into consideration the wood that you're painting on. And I'll show you what I mean by that. You can see this color now. Watch what happens to the color when I spray some clear water. You can see that it immediately turns a different color. That is the finished color of the wood, not the blonde. You know, they're real pale feature that it was before. It's taken on a yellowish hue. And you have to consider that when you're painting. It's just like if you sat down and you painted on a canvas that wasn't white. Let that soak in just a little. Years ago I carved uh, Arkansas basswood which was a lot darker than the basswood I get now from up north. So I had to, when I uh, switched over, I had to readjust my painting schedule, mixtures, to uh, accommodate for that. I use red on oxide, and now I use yellow ochre. This is an antique gold, but it's yellow ochre. I started using yellow ochre when I switched over to this northern wood to compensate for the lack of the yellow that was in the northern wood. Now today, being as we're painting a Native American's face, I'm going to add brown to the mixture. So with three, three, these three colors plus a little bit of midnight blue, and I mean a little bit, as you'll see. You can hit just about any kind of uh, uh, ethnic facial color just by mixing those three or four colors together. Okay? So, okay, now that the uh, water is soaked in, no shiny spots. So, I'm going to squeeze me out some red iron oxide here. Squeeze me out some uh, yellow ochre. Don't need as much of that as the other. And I'll squeeze me out some asphaltum. Don't use don't use burn umber. Don't use this. Don't use raw umber. Don't use burn umber use asphaltum if you want to paint my mixture. So I'll squeeze me out just a little bit of it. Come on. Sometimes this paint gets a little heavy. So what I do is just give it a squirt. Shake it up good. That'll be enough. Okay. Put my paints back in order here. Alright, so I've got my big biggest brush. I always use my biggest brush. 
And like I say, buy you a good brush and it'll last you a long, long time. I've been using this brush, the company that I bought this brush for from went out of business about 10 years ago. I'm still use, using their brushes. They're good brushes. Get that water up in the ferrule. Bring out the color. Now he's a Native American, so he's going to be a lot more red in his uh, facial color as he would be if he would be a Caucasian. Looks pretty good there. There's no, there's no one part of this, two parts of that, a quarter part of that. It's visual. You have to, you know, if you're going to paint, you got to learn to visualize what these colors are. I always and get, uh, it's kind of amusing when I see trays like this. I don't remember where, oh, I, I know where I got that one. I didn't buy it. I just picked it up somewhere. People will put all their colors around there and then they'll dab a little here and dab a little there. You just don't paint like that. Okay, I've got my colors mixed here, all right? First thing I'm gonna do is rinse my brush out. Get rid of all that color. Now I'm gonna come back with a brush that's pretty well, still got a lot of water in it, and pick up some more color and test it on my neck and that looks pretty good. So I'll dip my brush fully into the water now and mix up a lot of, a lot of that paint and test it one more time. That looks pretty good. And then I start putting it on. Really lay it on. You want it on there a lot. And by that I mean you want your brush loaded up so you really put a nice wet coat on there so it sinks in. Now you can see the more that I put on here, the closer I get to that strong color in the back, it gets a little darker. So you, again, you know, it's all visual. You have to, you're going to have to stop in a little while and Readjust your colors, possibly. See if I can't get out of here without having to do that. I don't think I am, so I'm gonna have to mix up some more. So I pull out a little more. this way it's, it's very forgiving. You notice I'm not concerned about slopping over because I'm going to come back in those areas with black and that's going to cover all that up. Now I can use that color to emphasize the stronger areas of the face. Areas that catch more sun will be darker than the areas that don't. If you're painting a painting this way and you're painting a face, always make sure you paint the hands. Don't forget to paint the hands. If you're doing a full figure, I always forget to paint hands. And I have to come back later and remix a whole bunch of paint up again just to paint some hands. 
Okay, he looks pretty good. All right, now. Switch over to a smaller brush here. This time I'm just going to pull out a little straight red and I'm going to hit these areas right here at the corner of his eye. And his nose. That definitely gets more sun than that. The rest of the face, being as it sticks it out like a dent. A cowboy's painting a cowboy face. He wouldn't have any paint up here across the top of his forehead because he wears his hat. So he'd have a farmer's tan up there. bottom lip here. Now with Midnight Blue, great color, one of the best blues you can use color of washdown, it's a color of blue jeans. And, but what I use is, is for it to amplify the uh, color of the face and I'll show you just how little you need. Right up here at the tip. I'm not going to get any out of there. I'm going to get all I need right out of there. Put that down there like that. And I'm going to paint his eyelids. See the difference? <laughs> there wasn't much in there because it was a piece of dried paint up there. There, there's some up there. Probably too much. Just his eyelids, upper and lower. Watch it make me a liar, make me have to squeeze out some more. Maybe not. Now, in these areas right here, where it's just like on your face. Right in there, we're going to accentuate those areas with this blue. Not a lot, because when we're adding this blue, we're also washing away some of the other color we put on there. Under his nose. Carry it right under his chin. It's almost like a five o'clock shadow, but it's, it's just a shadow. It's not the five o'clock. There we go. Let's just look at him for a second here. I need to darken him up just a little bit. But you can see on this one here, now this one's been varnished and everything, you can see the effect that that blue has. Not so much on the eyes, because I, 
I painted that painted strip over them. So we'll just get back to our big brush here. This time I'm going to take, take the water out of the brush. Because I want to get more paint in there. Got black eyes, so I'm gonna paint over that too. That's better. So again, we're just going to repeat the process. Put some red out here. I did that on purpose because it looks like it has lipstick, so I took my brush, clean brush, and I'm just going to wipe away some of that paint, and that'll give me the color I'm looking for. Okay? So, now we're going to let that set and dry just a little bit before I continue on, because I don't want to paint a wet face. And what can I do in the meantime? I'm going to take my shield here. Now I didn't wet the wood this time because I want this paint to go on really solid. I mean it's going to soak into the wood because I mean it is wet and the brush was wet but it wasn't soaking wet. But uh, I want a lot of paint. This is where those burn lines really come into play. And this brush here, it's also one of those brushes I bought from that company years ago. Once in a while, I'll 
set down and give these brushes a real good cleaning. That's what ruins a brush is paint collects up in the very end of the ferrule up there and clogs it up and just solidifies. It's really hard to get that crap out of there. You can see what I'm doing here. I'll go ahead and paint this and in the meantime I'm going to show you how to clean a brush real easy. Okay, this is my brush cleaning area on my table right here. And here's how I did it, do it. This is another one of those old brushes that I bought from bed. I will not throw these things away because they're just too good of a brush to paint with. This is women's hairspray. It's a, one of the best things you can get for cleaning brushes. Now, how I do it, I shake it up. Spray me out a nice big pool of this stuff, just like that. Take your brush, soak it up, and just start working it back and forth, like this. And what's that doing? What, what that is doing is it's forcing this lacquer because that's what that is, it's lacquer. I don't know if you all remember back in the old days they called uh, Senator Diane Feinstein from California the ozone lady because she used so much hairspray on her head. See that? See it's coloring there? See it's forcing that stuff out of there. concerned so much about the front of the brush as we are back there at where the ferrule is. You're never going to get all of it out of there, but you're going to get a heck of a lot of it out of there. And the more you work it back and forth, the darker that gets. See? Look at that. That's just old paint. And that's keeping your brush from uh, keeping its shape and holding as much paint as you need to paint. Okay, after we do that, get some cleaner this stuff in there. You can rinse it out in the water. Go down to Walmart and buy you some of this brush cleaner. You can get this at Hobby Lobby too. It's just soap. And it'll last you when a tub like this will last you a long, long time. And just run this around there. Again, work it into your brush. That's enough. And then rinse it out. Get your towel. See all that soap we've got up in the in the ferrule of that brush. Now look at how clean that is back in here. We, we couldn't get that that oh, far back. What? I get close, okay. But anyway, the brush is really clean. It's it's really clean back to that last point right there. And you're just you know you could work all day and you're never going to get that out of there. But that brush is clean now. It's discolored, 
Well, I mean, if you'd been using something as <laughs> painted as much as I have with this brush, uh, you'd be a little discolored too. So what I'm going to do now is squeeze me out just a little bit more here. And I'm going to roll my brush in that. Wipe most of it off real gently. And then just use my finger here to form it again. And like uh, that senator's hair, it's, the lacquer is going to dry and hold the shape of that brush. And then when you get ready to use it, just dip it in water, put it in that soap, rinse it out, clean it, and you're ready to go again with a fairly clean brush. And if you get a good quality brush and you do those steps, that brush is going to last you a long, long time. Okay, now. Like I said, I'm painting this, so I'm going to go ahead and finish painting the black on here, and then we'll come back. Okay, I'm painting the hair on here. What I do is I outline the area where the color breaks are. Got my magnifying glasses on. I bought down the street at the dollar store. And I went in and I washed my hands before I started this. That's something you just got to remember to do as you're painting. Just keep your hands clean. And I'm putting the paint on here, the black, pretty, pretty strong. This is going to take a while, so... So I'm going to continue doing this. Then we'll come back. Okay, I've outlined all the areas in black that I'm painting, so what I'm going to do now is just to go ahead and finish the video and uh, finish painting his hair and we will continue this on in the next video. So until then, I'll talk to you later.